I'd been a babysitter for years, working with several different companies and hundreds of families. This was just another job on a Thursday night. I drove to the house, getting there exactly on time, and met the parents. They were having a date night at a concert downtown and would be gone for five to six hours. It was 6.30 already, so this was a late job. They introduced me to their son, Jay, who was 10. He was very talkative and seemed to enjoy my company. When the parents left, he was excited to show me his video games and have me be his audience while he played. He played for around two hours before I started getting hungry. I let him continue playing in the living room while I made something to eat in the kitchen. I spent maybe five minutes heating up a meal, but then all of a sudden, when I got back, Jay was different. He wasn't talking anymore, and he seemed really shy. I tried starting up conversations, but he would barely respond. I had no idea what happened. I asked him if everything was okay, but he just nodded. I didn't want to be bothering him about it too much, so I pretended like nothing was wrong and watched him play some more. Once 9.30 came around, I told him it was time for bed and made sure he got ready. He was still acting weird, trying to avoid me and delay going to bed for as long as possible. Finally, just before 10, he got in bed. I went downstairs and sat on the couch. I was replaying the whole night in my head, wondering what went wrong, but there really didn't seem to be anything I did. I left him alone for a few minutes while I made food, and then it was like he just flipped a switch. While I was thinking on the couch, I heard Jay upstairs. He was walking down the hallway and then opened a door. I quickly went upstairs to see what he was doing but he wasn't in the hallway. I opened the door to his room, and there he was, sitting in his bed just as I left him. What are you doing, Jay? I asked nicely. He looked scared of me. After no response, I just decided to let it go and began walking out the door, but then he said to me he had to use the bathroom. I said okay and let him go down the hall. But while he was in there, I took a look around his room. It all looked like an ordinary 10-year-old boy's room. Just as I was walking out, I noticed something in the corner of my eye. I looked over, and right by the closet, I could see someone's eye looking back at me through the crack in the door. I hesitated, then walked out of the room and closed the door. I listened and didn't hear any movement in the room. As soon as Jay came out of the bathroom, I told him to be quiet and rushed him downstairs and into my car. I dialed 911, and as we waited for them to show up, I asked Jay if he knew someone else was in the house. He was quiet, not responding to me at all. When the first officer came, he went right inside and caught the man walking around upstairs. He looked like a 30-year-old creep. When questioned, the man said he was a friend of Jay's and that Jay even let him in the house to babysit for the night. Strangely, when the parents got home, they basically pushed me away and didn't give me any more updates on what happened. There was obviously something really weird going on, because Jay was very scared of him. I don't know if they knew each other, or if this was a first time encounter, but I hope it was all dealt with well by the police. When I was 16, my parents made me get a job. They were tough like that, and made my older brother do the same when he turned 16 as well. He got a job in retail, working as a cashier for some tech shop, but I wanted to do anything other than that. The only thing that caught my attention was babysitting. I had younger cousins that I enjoyed being around, so I thought it wouldn't be so bad. There was a company in my town that I applied for, and after a short interview, they offered me a position. 
It wasn't a very normal hiring process, at least I don't think. Once hired, they took some pictures of me and had me fill out a bio of who I was. Then they posted me on their website as a babysitter. I waited. A few weeks went by and still, nobody had booked me. My parents told me to be patient, but I was already looking for other jobs. Until one day, I finally got a notification. Someone booked me for a full night and morning, meaning I would have to spend the night there and continue watching them in the morning. It was on a Saturday, so I didn't have school, but spending the night somewhere else felt strange to me. I arrived at the house at the scheduled time of 10 p.m. I was met at the door by the dad, who invited me in. He was an older man, in his late 50s I bet, but he told me his daughter was only four years old. He showed me to the kitchen, where he had me sit at the table with him and talk to me for a good 25 minutes. He asked me all about myself. I wasn't sure if this was normal or not for parents to do when hiring a new babysitter, but I went along with it. At some point, I realized I hadn't met or even seen his daughter yet, so I asked where she was. He said she was upstairs in her room sleeping and that I wouldn't have to worry about watching her until the morning. Then he got up abruptly and said he had to go and would be back around 11 tomorrow morning. He stepped out and left me the key to the house. I remember feeling very confused about the whole situation. None of it felt like I thought it would. The first thing I did after he left was walk around the bottom floor. I forgot to ask where I was supposed to sleep, or if there was food for me to make, or any games for us to play. Probably all questions experienced babysitters would have asked right away. As I walked around, I began wondering where all the kids stuff was. He said his daughter was four, so I expected a mess of toys all over the house, but there wasn't a single toy in sight. I even checked in a few drawers that looked like they might have some, but there weren't any. The fridge and cabinets didn't seem to have much kid food either. I realized this was off to a really bad start, and I just needed to relax. I decided I would text the dad in the morning and ask him about the food and stuff, but for now I would just make myself a spot on the couch and sleep. I found a blanket and used the couch pillow, then turned off the lights. I tried to sleep for nearly two hours, but there was something off about the house that just kept me up. Then, at 1am, I heard something click on the other side of the house. I shot up and looked across the room. The whole house was quiet now. I was sitting up for a minute until I heard the back door softly slide open. My heart was pounding as I got up and went to the hallway that had a clear view of the back door. I was confused to see the dad with his back to me while he was trying to softly close the door behind him. I believe this moment that I had to process everything before he saw me was likely the reason for my escape. As he turned and saw me, I started running for the front door. His footsteps followed behind me, rushing down the hallway and yelling at me to stop. I ran for my car and got in. The dad wasn't far behind, banging on my window as I backed out of the driveway. While running away was a smart decision, the next one wasn't so much. I didn't say anything about what happened. I think I was worried that I had done something wrong or messed up as a babysitter somehow. A month later though, I finally told my parents and they said it was too late, but I should have reported it. It was an obvious red flag that the man didn't contact the babysitting company practically showing that he was guilty of something. I'm sure there was no daughter, and no reason for me to be at his house, other than for some sick plan he had set up for me. I hired a babysitter for my six-year-old a few months ago. 
I used a website to hire the same young girl every time because she was familiar with my son already. On this night though, she wasn't available. I had somewhere to be at 5 and only needed someone to watch my son for a few hours, but there was only one babysitter able to come at that time. It was a 17 year old boy named Ben who looked nice in the pictures. I scheduled him to be here at 4.30, then waited. At 4.30, I had my son turn off his video games so that I could introduce them, but Ben still didn't show. I was watching out the windows for his arrival, but at 5, I called the website and asked where he was. They told me he clocked in on their app, supposedly meaning he arrived and was babysitting already. After discussing it a bit more, they cancelled it and apologized, but said no one was available to cover for him. I was really angry, being forced to cancel my plans. At 6, I made dinner for myself and my son, and we started watching a show together. In the middle of the episode, there was a knock at the front door. I paused the show and went up to look through the peephole. A guy was on the porch, and I saw his car parked in our driveway as well. I opened the door. Hi, I'm Ben, he said. I gave him one of those, are you serious right now, looks. You're over two hours late, just go, I said, closing the door in his face. Not the nicest thing to do on my part but I was honestly even more upset that he chose to show up still. I sat back down and played the show again. After a couple minutes though, I checked the window and saw that his car was still there in the driveway. A cold rush ran through me. I went back to the door and looked out the peephole. It was dark and at first I didn't see anything, but then, at the very bottom of the peephole, I saw him. He was standing very still, pressed all the way up against the door, like he was listening. I watched him for a few seconds, so creeped out that I was in a state of shock. I must have been visibly so, because my son called out to me in a worried voice. I snapped out of it and backed away, telling my son to go to his room and lock the door. I called the police, but I think Ben heard. He knocked on the front door, then the doorknob rattled, and he banged on the door again. I heard his footsteps move around to a nearby window, followed by him trying to pry it open. I ran around the house to make sure everything else was locked, then joined my son in his room while we waited for the police. Five long minutes passed before I heard sirens approaching the house. When they pulled up, Apparently Ben was sitting in his car, pretending like he was happy to see them. He made up a whole story about me being crazy and said he was just here to babysit at his scheduled time. His lies didn't last after I showed them the confirmation email saying he was supposed to come two hours ago. The next few weeks were overcomplicated, but at the end of everything, not much happened. Ben lost his job, but aside from that, nothing else was really done because he denied everything. It's really scary because if he had shown up on time, then I would have left my son alone with him. I don't know what he was trying to do, but I'm glad I didn't have to find out.